Let me show what happened here in South Florida. Okay? On a cabinetry field. Alright? This it's what is what I built for a, a general contractor that brought me the material okay to build uh, for his client a corner kitchen okay with this wood but she didn't purchase this wood she purchased maple okay now this is the cabinet the material that he was supposed to bring to me so I could build this 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 kind of a cabinet or, or any other maple cabinet for kitchen all right you see the difference all right the difference the quality of this work was not bad but you as, as far as you see here you know how bent is the side of the cabinet all right it's not good material cheaper this is more qualified okay just for you to have understand when you hire someone okay you know here in South Florida you gotta be aware who you hiring if that person is really good or if that person is gonna try to cheat cheat on you okay and that's what these contractors are doing these days they try to make extra money on the material and and try to cheat on you okay and give you this kind of a cabinet okay I'm not saying the cabinet but I'm, I'm talking about the wood in general okay instead to give the real maple okay so you be aware who you hire and price means a lot you're looking for cheap stuff you're going to get a, at the end you know some kind of a dis disappointment all right hire someone that I don't charge you cheap but a show quality you know what I mean and in and, and, and a good good uh, uh, old school a craft that's that's very important everything is very you see very neat very neat very neat okay very neat all right the edge band well glue it and everything okay the screw staple you don't see no deviation okay all right no deviation everything even even you know corner cabinet all the the angle cut exactly okay so this is the kind of work that you're not getting on a Chinese you know getting on these people that are installing cabinets and putting cabinets together from Chinese you ain't gonna get this kind of quality only if you find a good you know cabinet maker okay that has this kind of a passion you know to build this kind of work all right so be aware this is what happens when you try to cheat on your customer. Alright? You sell your product as a maple, natural maple. Okay? And then you build the cabinet, you know, with other kind of plywood. Okay? And then, you know, the bad thing you try to do to others come back to you because your customer is not stupid this day everybody knows everything okay so now we gotta remake it make a new one and, and who, who you know and who software is the okay okay gotta gotta remake it that corner cabinet because that was not the right material this is this is maple all right that one was not maple you know now we gotta remake it you know make a new one but that was not my fault okay
Okay, this is Roberto. I am removing the key, uh, the upper cabinets over here, the 42 inches upper cabin, and uh, to replace it with the with the maple cabinet. Okay, so I am Roberto. I am the one who's doing the work over here. Okay, this cabinet. We're gonna take it out and put the new ones. Maple, okay, inside maple. Or, or mean plywood or paper. All right. Okay. Okay, I want to show this process over here. It's very popular, everybody knows. It's about edge bending, you know, the boards for your cabinets, for your furniture, whatever it is, okay? Most of those companies today, they use, you know, the edge bending uh, machinery. You know, that's not a contact cement glue. That's not this. That's not real contact cement glue, okay? Contact cement glue, it's very strong. When you spray it, okay, with the, go with the gun, all right, you put a lot of glue on the on, on the on the sides of the, the the board and then you glue your material you edge you 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 edge banding and this is forever this doesn't don't peel out so that's how you know high end woodworking is you know a person that really knows how to work you know quality work you know starting from this like a old school you know so like like the shoes men's back then when they used to you know glue the sole of your shoes you know this contact cement glue, you know, once you put that quantity and you wait for the right time for it to stick the other, you know, the, the edge bending here, you know, it just never comes out, it never comes out. You know, cutting the boards very well straight, you know, and this is what I'm talking about. People want a cheap work and looking for this cabinet baker everywhere around. These people are, you know, are in panic, you know. They, they, they wanted to make money quick. They, 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 they charge uh, cheap laborers over there and they put a lot of work uh, at the same time, two, three jobs at the same time, you know, pushing those guys to work for a minimum salary of 12, 13, 15 dollars an hour and you expect to get a good furniture, a good kitchen, well done, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, all right? If you don't pay, you know, a very qualified person that really has knowledge, for example, myself, I pay, I'm doing this for 37 years, 38 years, you know, so all kind of furniture. If you know, if you're looking for cheap stuff, you're not going to be satisfied. You always, you know, is gonna have some kind of a problem. Uh, the problems are, are, are many, you know, uh, those people who are so involved with the other work, they put your, your job behind, they bring to your house a few pieces, you know, just to entertain you, and you think, you know, they work in your furniture, they not work in your furniture, okay? So, if you're looking for a good quality, high-end woodworking, you know what I mean? You pay a little bit of money, but sure, you get a quality, you get a warranty, you know, and you know that all your cabinets is gonna be laid out on your wall correctly, nothing crook, you know, and things like that. So I'm um, just is a few example of the edge bending, you know, that I always talking about. Okay, I've been doing this for many years, and I used to work with the, uh, 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 the edge bending machinery. You know, I used to really not like it because people you know pass those these boards you know through the machinery and and, and the material is not a contact cement glue that's is is a, a plastic a melted plastic so that plastic really doesn't stick well so uh, you waste your money that's the reality you waste your money you see a lot of a lot of uh, material pinning off you know and uh, it's, it's it's not good but as far I try to tell people, you know, pay a little bit more of money, you know, pay what, a, what a, you know, what is, is the real thing for, you know, a woodwork, you know, pay quality work, because these people, once you pay them well, they will build you something very, very, you know, uh, qualified, very high end, and, 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 and you'll be satisfied.
you know what I mean? Why throw, throw money on cheap labor, you know what I mean? And then you push the, 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 these people to do high-end woodwork. They're not going to do it. They ended up, you know, uh, abandoning the work. That's what happened in South Florida everywhere, even New York. You know, people abandon their jobs because, you know, they charge so cheap, you know, and the customers started to demand so much, you know, uh, 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 high-end detailing, and they cannot give that, and they ended up abandoning. I don't, cons I don't recommend anybody to, to spend the money on, on, on something uh, 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 that you, you, you've been dreaming for many years, you know, and, and, and find cheap labor. You Cheap labor you find everywhere, but you're not going to be satisfied. That's the reality, okay? So that's that's what I can uh, uh, explain to you. We do edge bending, okay? Using contact cement glue, all right? Not using like uh, you know the edge bending machine that does a, you know the plastic liquid that uh, you know once they they pass the you know the edge bend through the machine, you know they glue with the plastic. Uh, liquid and that plastic liquid peel off very easy so the contact cement it's very very strong glue for this process and your cabin you know have durability for many many years because this this veneer that uh, we <coughs> must use to to give the decoration for the board you know that need to be very well glued this process has to be used contact cement glue with the spray, not the brush, but with the spray so we can spray a, a very good amount of a quantity as you can see here on the, on the, on the edge. Okay, so that gives long, long time durability for the, for the edge bending, you know, to, you know, to, to, lead, to have long, long durability you know what I mean so this is what's going on in the cabinet the field many clients does not know you know they purchase purchase <clears throat> for example maple people don't put maple in the cabinets you know because it's more money of course but the quality is way 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 much better even for us you know cabinet maker to build and cut it on a machine on a table saw it's more uh, the material is more straight than than the other plywood. So this is just a demonstration of how I do. I do by hand. All the jobs do by hand. You know, filing. You know, we strip it with this raised blade. You know, so don't scratch the material and you know or the board. You know, but everything is well taken care. You know. Um, as we, you know, do our high-end cabinetry uh, woodworking, you know, I do have a small place for one job at a time. You know, most of my job is estimate uh, 30, 60, and 90 days. So I let the customer know everything uh, about, you know, the construction of the project. I take care of the, the situation on the house, a wall, n uh, levels of the walls, floor, you know, I measure everything, I make a template for everything to make sure when the cabinet comes, everything fits right, perfect in the place. So if you're looking for a cabinet maker, uh, you know, with a long, long experience, I'm 61 years old, I've been doing this for almost 40 years, and um, here in the United States, New York, Boston, and in Florida since 1992, since the Hurricane Andrew, I've been doing this. And if you're looking for a cabinet maker, want a high-end uh, high cabinet maker for your project, and we can work step, step by step, you know, um, customer and, and myself, for example, I can lead your projects and make sure you get satisfaction for every uh, uh, detail of your your furniture. My name is Roberto. People here in the field call me by Coach Batata because I used to coach soccer. 
and uh, my phone number is 954-870-8476 and I'm here in Deerfield okay if you want to contact me please do okay as I said you know I have a small place over here for one project at the time um, I don't do I don't contract uh, sign contract with two customers at the same time because that gives conflict and and also you know I I like to work you know very 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 good so I don't like to work under pressure so I give my estimate time for the project and you be guaranteed that my time you know never never uh, uh, we stress you for more days you know I will work uh, in time and most of the time I finish before way before of the time estimate so if you like contact me um, you know please do thank you very much this process is the cleaning of the recess of the glue okay of the when you edge bending you you know the boards the, the pieces okay it's very easy i don't use mineral uh, lock clear because locker because thinner would damage the the clear of the the natural maple so i use mineral spirit as you see all the the pieces are well clean okay and filing to make sure okay you can you know when you do this with your nail you don't see it okay everything is well filing now everything is getting ready a cleaning is getting ready for the assembly okay so when you have all these pieces clean you know perfect you know taking all the recess of the glue recess then we start assembling and I'll show you how assembling my cabins okay okay this is a very important steps that uh, I like to to present here okay is after the lamination when you have all your pieces okay fine and clean the glue clean the recess of the glue everything okay what many cabinet makers okay do not do is taking care of the cutting process on the table saw the cutting process on the table saw means everything because once you don't cut those pieces 100% square, uh, when, I, when I say 100%, it has to be 100%. Cannot, you cannot skip 116, 18, none of the stuff. Because you're going to build a square box. A square box, if you, if you, if, when you're mounting, your, when you're assembling your cabinet, 116, one side of the cabinet with 116 left, that is going to create problem to adjust your doors because the doors also come 100% square so when you cut those boards you have to make sure okay the person that is working the cabinet maker he gotta have the ability to really do this okay for example I have 43 inch and 1516 okay it's not 44 all right it's 43 inch and 15 16. now you look to the other side is the same thing 43 15 16. what that means that means that all the pieces is even is fully 100% square even though it's a rectangle, but it doesn't matter. It's a square. You can put the square here, there, there. It's square. When you mount in this cabinet, you assemble these cabinets, it's going to be 100% square. Now you put your backing, as you as you see here, my cabinets, for example, is not 12 an inch. A lot of people build cabinets 12 an inch. And then when they build 12 an inch, what happened here is that they build the cabinet 12 an inch for example this is the the top the top part is 12 an inch so that's mean the depth of your cabinet is going to be 12 an inch 
So you you be able to put everything, big 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 uh, dishes inside here, big plates, for example, more than than eleven and a half. Now, when you build a cabinet that twelve an inch, if you do this dado, your cabinet becomes eleven inch deep, not twelve. Now, some of them put the backing, put the backing piece on the twelve an inch. Okay, so they will be able to have the fully 12 inch depth. But what's the problem of having staple these pieces over here, okay, on the back? That's not not good because that's not it's not gonna it's not gonna give you long time uh, uh, durability for your cabin because those staples get rotten for some reason and and then start open up your cabin in the back when the guys push the, the, the drills and things like that. They're no good. You need the data. You need this. Because that will secure your cabinet. Okay? 100%. Okay? In the data. And then you put the staples behind to make sure the cabinet doesn't come out of square. That's a high-end woodworking. Just take time for you to do this. It's not just... You know, like people try to compare Chinese cabin, IKEA cabin, Home Depot cabin with the with, with the high end woodworking. Okay, it's not the same. That's what I'm trying to tell people. You know, pay good money for a, you know you, it, it's not good if you pay a good money for someone that don't have that kind of experience because you're not gonna get the quality you want anyway. You're gonna end up paying a lot of money. You're not gonna get it. You need to get a cabinet maker with a with, with the full 100% experience, okay? That really can give you that kind of a high-end woodworking. All right. So this is my ways to build up, okay, high-end cabinets or furniture for my customers. So after this, now everything is clean, nice and clean, okay. Uh, filing everything is fine. You see, you know, feel your 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 nails on 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 the edge banding, right? So I'm gonna put those caps together, and I'm gonna show how I'm put them together. Okay, that's for the next step. Okay, the assembling process. Okay, mounting the cabinets, assembling the cabinets. Okay, as you see, I have a MDF board here on top of my table saw to make sure when I put the cabinets. Together, the piece stay look even, hundred percent even. Not even, not even. You cannot even feel with your nail, okay, through uh, the mounting here. Now, one inch and a half staple, okay, plus one inch and a half screw, galvanized screw, okay. So, this is the assembling process. Continue. Stapling. Okay. Even to staple, you need to know how much you're going to give the distance. I give you about three quarter of inch. For the staple, centralize the gun, staple in the middle, three staple, okay, four staple. So you have to secure this cabinet very good. We have one, two, three, four, five staple, and one and two nails, okay. You don't want to load it too much of staple and nails over here. Because you have to remember, this is a plywood, okay? Even though it's a good plywood, they tend, to, if you put too much stuff, too much, you, you might be open up a little, okay? But, but it's very strong, okay? Never happen. When you buy a good plywood, you never, ne you never have a problem to, you know, to split, you know, in the middle. Okay, but two, five staple, two nails, two, two, uh, Two screw is sufficient, okay? Plus what goes around, you know, on the four sides, the backing, everything. So 
That's how I do. Another interesting point here is how you get your cabinets zero square, 100% square. People ask me, you know, oh, I square my cabinet for the front. You know, I always square my cabinet from the front. And it's very hard to get, you know, 100% square. Okay, it's very hard. For example, here you see 57. Okay. And here you see it. And over here you see it 56 and a half. Why? If the piece is 100% square, why have this, this different here? Okay. Here's the story. People doesn't realize that you never square your cabinets from the front. Squaring your cabinets from the front, you're never gonna get a good lineup of doors. Your cabinets always gonna be, you know, out of square. The right way to square a square cabinet on the front is when you square the cabinet from the back. From the back, okay? Once you square your cabinet from the back, that's me. It's the wall that is going to keep the cabinet square. So this square, the area over here, is 100% square. As you look, you saw we have on the front half an inch out of square, okay? But if you look here, we got a 56 and 13, 16. Right? 56 and 13, 16. All right? Now, you have here 56 and a little bit, a little bit, tiny bit. Okay? But we have, we, we are in a square here. Okay? Now, once you, the front is always different because the front, once you start putting your uppers, one cabin next to the other, they automatically stay everything square. But if you, if you square your cabinet in the front, your back is not going to be square. And then definitely you're going to have a problem with your doors. Right? So this is a step that many, many people don't know. It's a very important uh, 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 detail because a lot of people install kitchen and then they cannot adjust the doors 100%. Okay? Now you know, you know, uh, uh, the trick, uh, the, the technique of, a, you know, get your cabinet 100% square. Okay? Another example I'm going to give for... 100% to acquire 100% a, a square cabinet. See these pieces over here? Across. That's the bottom piece. This is the top where we screw the cabinet on the wall. Sometimes we screw both sides when it's necessary. But what is the, why, why, is, why the reason of this two piece over here? Some people only put this one. This one on top and nothing in the bottom. That's that's a trouble. Trouble because the size of a cabinet like this or like the ones I'm I'm remaking because the company the guy that I built up this cabinet, the old cabinet that we're gonna remove tomorrow, you know, had a problem with the client because he didn't build, you know, this kind of cabinet. Maple was other material. So 46 inch cabinet like this, long like this for example, okay, or any other cabinet, even the, this little one of the, uh, over here, 16 inch, okay, any one of this cabinet, you need to put partition on top, partition on the bottom, because when you put partition on top, partition on the bottom, your cabinet will stay 100% square, and then you'll be able to get the final uh, doors alignment, 100%, everything even. So this I see a lot on Chinese cabinet. You know, those cabinets come out of square. They don't know how to put it in the square because nobody's gonna bother to do that. 
So all these concerns over here that, you know, a cabinet maker like me, for example, you know, take care when I, when I get a, a client, you know, I make sure everything is, is high end. So this, this, this is what you don't get when you pay cheap cabinets or cheap labor from, from this kind of people, okay? So this is what, it's just a little tip that I'm, I'm giving to you. Now, the process of a square, you know, you go on the X over here, measure from that point, right, to this point, okay, must be equal because that's the back of the cabin. Once you get there, line up 100%. If the pieces was cutting, was cut, well, so everything is a square, no problem. And and this these two boards over here will secure the cabin on the square. So that's make sure during the years your your doors, you know, don't suffer uh, on level. Okay, a little tip that I'm giving so you guys understand these points because a lot of people ask, oh, you know, the kitchen looks nice, but uh, nobody can line up these doors. You know, even yes, because the cabin is w w was uh, built built up, you know, out of square, and then they put in a wall. Once you put the cabinet out of square in the wall, you cannot correct. It's too late. So. This is how I drill my shelf post. First, I centralize with the center bit, and then I use the original for the pin shell. I'll show you. Now you change the drill bit for the pin shell. Okay, and it's very easy now. So now you got a perfect hole. Perfect centralized hole. Line up so your shelf is not be in, you know inclinated. You know they they have a lot of problems with this drilling the holes because they drill the machine, they make mistakes and things like that. You know, but that's how I do it by hand. Okay, everything is well taken care. Like I say, high end would work. New the cabs are here. The guy make the guy you know try to cheat the, the lady over here. The kitchen is supposed to be maple and he fabricated with uh, some on some other kind of plywood. So she threw him out. And now I'm doing you know changing the whole new uh, upper cab this maple. You know I have to remove all this stuff. On a new pen over here.
you see here the painters okay they charge for each door um, around 24 inch the minimum side $40 just for painting prime and painting finish $40 okay now how much would it be to make the one I'm gonna make here to make the door solid biscuit joint everything okay and paint if they charge just to paint prime and paint forty dollar well I think a hundred dollar for piece I think that is a very, a very fair, fair price right so now you get the hundred dollar and multiply for 94 pieces that I did for this kitchen okay see how much money just indoors okay you know uh, you know they owe me do me a favor this is Roberto um, show this to your your boss because I've been doing all these doors and I'm working all this project for about already I uh, explained to you you know this is my third week plus the other two weeks that I was was behind months ago and I'm manufacturing new doors again this is a very time consuming uh, process you know to <clears throat> to do each door each doors go a biscuits okay you gotta put a biscuits in between okay so imagine how much time consuming we have I have to to go through you know to get all these doors together plus resending already drill the holes and everything all all of them I got the whole drills and everything so now I gotta go over you know and resend it you know what I mean and reprime it you know resend it again and then in the start painting process okay I wanted you to show you your boss because you know I want to show who's gonna pay me for this this work
Brillo. High-end painting. Not the garbage before. This is how I prime my doors, my panels, your panels. <laughs> this is just the prime, okay? E pergunta pra mim, como é que eu trabalho numa área tão pequenininha desse jeito aqui? Well, eu quando era menino, eu fazia carrinho para catar ferro velho no lixo. Ia lá para aquelas fábricas, catava lá, catava tudo que podia catar para ganhar um dinheirinho, para tomar tubaína e comer doce. Então me viram, tá entendendo? Assim é que tem que ser. Aí, tô dando uma organizada e vou pintar todo esse lote aí que vocês estão vendo aí, ó, de porta. Eu vou pintar aqui e vou estoquear aqui e vai ficar lindas. Abraço.